So question 24, part A, we've just got a state's Newton's second law. Um, don't be tempted for force equals mass times acceleration. That's, that's only the special case where the mass remains constant. The, um, the correct version for Newton's second law is that the force is directly proportional Uh, to the rate of change of momentum. Um, with these questions, what they're always going to like you to do is don't, um, if you did just go in and you went sort of force is proportional to the rate of change of momentum, you would have to uh, explain what the terms are. So you'd need to say F is force, P is momentum, and T is time. Okay, let's move on. A comet makes an inelastic collision with a small asteroid in, in space. State two physical quantities conserved in this collision. Okay, so the first one I would go with is momentum. Will always be conserved and of course now where they might be trying you might be a bit hesitant to say this but of course the total energy is always conserved even in an inelastic collision because in an inelastic collision it's the kinetic energy doesn't stay as kinetic energy but the total energy will always be conserved right moving on Part B2, figure 24.1, shows how the force F acting on the comet varies with time t during the collision. Describe and explain how the force acting on the asteroid varies with time during this collision. You may sketch a suitable graph on figure 24.1 to support your answer. Good. So what this is really asking is, do you know Newton's third law? More importantly, it's actually asking, can you apply Newton's third law? So Newton's third law says when two bodies interact, the forces they apply on each other are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So if this one that they've given you is the force acting on the comet, the force acting on the asteroid must be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So the force on the comet would look would be the mirror image oops, sorry, of uh, the one previously and just to make sure we will write it the force is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And moving on. We are now looking at a hydrogen atom traveling at 500 meters per second. It's making a head-on collision with a stationary carbon atom. The collision is perfectly elastic, so kinetic energy is conserved. After the collision, the hydrogen atom bounces back with a speed of 420 meters per second. Figure 24.2 shows the atoms before and after the collision. The mass of the hydrogen atom is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and the mass of the carbon atom is 2 times 10 to the minus 26. And we've got to calculate the speed v of the carbon atom after the collision. Okay, so what we need to know is that momentum is always conserved. So I always like to do these kind of collision ones before and after. So before, obviously the stationary carbon atom has got no momentum, so what we've got here is 
the momentum of the hydrogen atom, so momentum, I should probably put my formula, momentum is mass times volume, so we've got 500 multiplied by 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27, and that is going to equal the momentum afterwards, and we've got to be a little bit careful here because our momentum of our hydrogen atom afterwards is in the opposite direction so we've got we must put in our minus sign to give us 420 multiplied by the mass 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 and now we've got to deal with the momentum of the carbon atom so that's 2 times 10 to the minus 26 multiplied by V so if we rearrange, we're going to get 500 plus 400, oh sorry, 500 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27 plus 420 times 1.7 times 10 to the minus 27. And then if I divide that by the mass of the carbon atom, 2 times 10 to the minus 26, that will give us an answer of 78.2 meters per second. And looking at my significant figures, I would say, well, we've got two there, we've got two there, so I'm going to go with 78 meters per second.